And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for a bunch of donation decks today. We're starting off with Sultai Yurok Lands. I well, The last deck that I played was Sultai Lands for Rotation Proof Monday. Um, as y'all know, I took took yesterday off, but uh, had a lot of people you know, watching those Rotation Proof uh, videos over on the YouTube channel. And they were all really good. We had a lot of good decks that we played a couple days ago. And this was one of them, was, was a Sultai Lands deck. The comment that a lot of people had in on the uh, the YouTube channel, though, is that they wish that there was Yurok in that deck. And they thought that, that that deck would be better if there was Yurok the Desecrated, which I am a very big fan of Yurok the Desecrated as a card. I think it's just a really cool card and everything, and I enjoy playing it. But I was a little skeptical if it should be in the list or, or not. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I didn't have it in the deck that I made. However, we got a donation, though, today to put Yurok into a Sultai Lands deck here. We got the full four copies, so that's why I'm calling it Sultai Yurok Lands. So all the people that wanted to see Yurok in the Sultai Lands deck, here we go. We're also pairing it with Cavalier of Thorns, going with our elemental sub-theme, and even a Multani, because we can get a whole bunch of lands in our graveyard and, um, and in play also. To help make sure that we don't mill out, looks like we got a Nexus of Fate in here, because this is not a rotation-proof deck. It almost is. You know, besides Rejuvenator, the Nexus, that's that's it here. And then, obviously, different lands in our man mana base. Hey, what's up, Cajun guy? Nine whole months. Thank you so much there, Cajun guy. Thanks for that continued support. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's give this a try. Let's see how... Let's see how your rock performs and Cavalier Thorns in the deck as well. I was worried about milling out one, and I was worried about Cavalier just milling over too many lands. And me just having a whole bunch of lands in my graveyard and then not having like lands in play. <clears throat> but we're going to see how it works out with these. Um, so that's, that's, that'll be good to uh, test. Um, I like all these Unmoored Egos in the sideboard and everything here. So let's get on to it with... Our donation decks, which we got three of them to do today, we're heading on over to the traditional constructed queue and seeing if we can win five before we win, sorry, before we lose two. Yeah, clear the, clear the mind is like the kind of card that I just basically never think it's really worth it kind of thing. Ooh, World Shapers. But, yeah, Clear the Mind can, you know, get, get all your lands back into your your library and everything, of course. Yeah, Jace 4 can definitely be a, a, a win con if you get real close to milling out. Which this deck probably can because not only are you going to have, like, the normal triggers with Risen Reef Cavalier Thorns, but if you if you have a rock sorry, if you have a your rock in play, you get double the triggers. So you get like, you know, your Cavalier Thorns mills over ten, for example, there. So even though we have a Nexus to make sure we don't mill out, maybe uh maybe we don't actually have enough to kill our opponent in play whenever we start Nexusing and taking the rest of the turns. I don't know. We'll kinda see what happens here. Alright, so we're playing against mono blue. Is what it looks like here. So no land drop. They got their three cards over there. They're going with Mitch mismatching islands. So, like, Temple of Malady wouldn't have been a bad one to get either, but it's probably good just to get the Field of the Deads in play. Ow. Hmm. 
Maybe I don't want to Field of the Dead here, though. So I want to start diversifying my lands. So we have four, five, this would be six. Yeah, let's let's diversify. I only have one blue source in play right now, but I'm about to play another one with some at Gilgate. Oh, actually, this is... I forgot, this one's not really Simic Ramp. This is Simic Quasi-Leaf. Quasi-Reef. I need to tell you that. All right. Um... I mean, Cavalier Thorns is what I want to resolve, but it's just not super likely that Cavalier Thorns resolve, so let's just get another Rejuvenator in here. Like a boss. What is up? Been loving the stream ca past couple of months. I just want to know where you get all your ties. So I got, I've gotten most of my ties first. Let me get the, the hype boats in the chat. There we go for a resub here. I've gotten most of my ties from a company called Spreza Box, where you sign up for a, a box monthly uh, from them, and it ha the box has a, a a tie, a pair of socks, and then some other assorted um, men's accessories. And so I did that for a few years, and that's where I got most of my ties. Hey, Techstar. All the resubs coming in today. Staying on that nine-month streak as well. Go Cowboys. Speaking of ties, mine's a little messed up here, but that's all right. All right, so we know Cavalier Thorns is going to resolve, so I guess we just play it. Um, it would be kind of nice to play Nexus. Nexus could get spell pierced, though. And presumably, there we go, we'll hit a land that will turn on at Field of the Dead. I'll go ahead and try the Tamiyo out here. I think it's better than wasting four mana. If Tamiyo gets spell pierced, she gets spell pierced, oh well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I got nine mana. If I draw an untap land, I could go double Cavalier. I'm going to go Thought Erasure, though. Thought Erasure, Cavalier. The storied past holds our future. So they have dive down to protect it, or do they not know Cavalier has reach? I'm kind of thinking dive down. Uh, as yeah, as far as I know, really just lands and contempts. The other thing with the dim rotation proof Demir deck is maybe hostage takers somewhere, if not main in the side like sideboard hostage takers. That was like the only thing that that I really think that deck's kind of missing. I, don't know, I keep the reach in mind there. I guess our opponent didn't. Q 
Can't be countered. Protection from blue. That card seems good. So we're going to shift towards some Ceratops. Multani also has Reach, which is nice. I don't think this is a great Yurok matchup. They just, they just fly over Yurok. I don't think this is a great Tamio matchup either. I'm going to take out Tamio, trim like two Yuroks to get these three Ceratops in here. And then do we want to change any like do we want to change anything else over here to get these Legion's ends or Golden Demise in? I mean I could see taking out the other two Yuroks for two Legion's ends. Yeah, I can see that. God, this thing has a reach too. All right, let's go with this. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Legion's End instead of Golden Demise. Their flyers can get bigger. You know, if they have like, and they have like dive down and stuff. I don't know. Golden Demise, you know, costing three mana. We already have, like, the other eight three drops that I want to be playing. I'll just try Legion's End. This Legion's End also gets dive down and everything, too, though. Um, do we go to five? Yeah. Wow. Do we get rid of Rejuvenator or Risen Reef? I mean, our, our deck has 29 lands in it. So every hand having, you know, like zero or one land and all that. <laughs> That's pretty rough. But we're, we're playing against mono blue. We already know that. There's no there's no reason just to concede. Never know. Maybe we can get this. Green mana. Ugh. Yuck. That was not the card we wanted to draw here. Do you think they should change that they should change how the starting hand in best of three works the way that it does in best of one? No, I think that is I think that's a just even a really bad decision for best of one also. I just I don't like that. I mean I guess if it's just one game, I guess you kinda have to do that, I guess. But no, I don't think that that's how magic should be played. You're not going to be doing that in Paper Magic at all. I mean, it's just not even feasible. You can't... It's not even something you can possibly do. Hmm. I'm glad we did that Rejuvenator because there's only one land in the next five cards. We're going to have to have a lot of land somewhere in here. And there's, there's half the deck are lands. they got to be somewhere. 
But we need two more green sources for this Cavalier of Thorns, which is a problem. And I guess Cavalier of Thorns doesn't even block the Surge Mare either. Which is also a problem. Yeah, our opponent's playing one one island each for they're playing different arts. No, best of five and best of seven aren't really things. Let's get this other Legion's end in here. We're going to need that f for that 05. I guess looking at our deck, I guess we really don't have any way. All of our creatures are green, so we don't have any way to block that 05. Unbelievable. Thank you. Can we just get some lands? Why is it so hard just to draw lands? Opponents had very good spell pierces this match. Oh right, you're coming in to play tapped anyway. Hmm. This kind of game is why I don't even like Assassin's Trophy. It's like a card. This is why you never see me put Assassin's Trophies in my deck. Like, we can't we can't actually cast Assassin's Trophy. Because it just ramps them and lets them counter all my stuff. Should I try to Risen Reef to look for another black source so I can double spell with Legion's End and Trophy? Definitely feels like whatever we play is getting countered. You wouldn't think that the deck with 29 lands would have really bad mana issues, but that's what we've had here for games 2 and 3. That's probably a little unlucky there. I would cast Cavalier of Thorns if we had the mana to. But we don't. Yeah. 
Yeah, our deck could yeah, our deck could definitely use some Veil of Summers for sure. Legion's ends are awesome. You shouldn't really cut Legion's ends. We I don't think we need I don't think you need four trophies though. Don't like the trophies. But yeah, Veil Veil of Summer would be a good one. I mean we could also, you know, draw like our, our shifting ceratops. You got those. You don't see tons of mono blue around. Um, you know, one if we just draw if we drew a shifting ceratops, we would have been fine because you know that would be able to block those flyers because you can give a reach. But hey, Johnny Popeye, thanks for that resub there. Another month of the best arena content on Twitch. Oh, thanks, Johnny Popeye. Thank you very much. The thing I've been I've been really disappointed with our mana base. Like surprisingly disappointed. Seven, eight, nine. How many lands will we have that add green mana when we got these triple greens and everything? Because it doesn't seem like we have enough. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, yeah, that's 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 a problem. That's, we need we need more green mana. It has fifteen. We need like we need like eighteen plus. Whoa, Johnny Pot Pie gifted out five subs. Thanks so much, Johnny Pot Pie. Thank you very much. And everybody's getting those hype votes in the chat. Santa Pot Pie. Thank you so much there. So, congratulations to Odin Leader, Stroom, Conan, Stotts. And Hillix and Pit 1357. Got a sub goal. Hey, Taco Hero. Welcome to the channel as well. So we're getting we're getting pretty close to a 12 hour stream. Probably gonna do one of those this weekend. Alright, so that thing's pro green. Sack counter to put just one 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 or sack one of those to just put one 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 counter on one of those. We'll just block here. All right, let's update our our sub goal counter. That's sub goal number eighteen. So we're two sub goals away from a twelve hour stream. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of leaning away from the the Grixis deck for the qualifier this weekend. Played some more of it last yesterday, and I haven't been doing too well with it recently. I've been super impressed with it. So I'm think I'm I'm thinking maybe the Sultai mid range. I put together my own Sultai deck that we're going to be playing here at. Uh, the end of the stream tonight and depending on how much we like that deck maybe that deck get that 
second black there. <laughs> I won't be playing Nexus. Okay. Um, sorry, taking care of some thumbnail business there. See, they block with the pro green creature. Darn, I figured it out. Temple of Melody. Love the temples. You get a scry, just get a free spell. Sure. Yeah, y'all y'all are also nice in chat. That one's I really appreciate how how nice everybody is in chat. Ain't no need to try, it's going going pretty good. I got started just a, a little bit late on the stream today. And And so it was a little hectic at the beginning, but we're settling down now. We got three donation decks to run through. And then... Uh, Sultai Midrange deck I put together for later. To try that out. Hmm... I can't cast cast down a Nexus, and I think the best thing to be doing right here is to be casting Nexus. It took you like 30 plus mid-range games to get through that, that singleton event? Oh man, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. That's a lot. Okay, so we'll focus here on game two. Looks like we're playing against a, you know, a beginning deck. Uh, hopefully our Yurok, hopefully we get to draw Yurok. We haven't drawn Yurok yet. Hopefully we get to and we get to play it and it does something cool. Hoping all those things happen.
All you need for singleton events are 150 petitioners and 100 islands. That's so many petitioners, though. All right, our, our deck needs more green mana. Actually, I probably should just got rid of Thought Erasure here. Yep. Ugh. I don't really care what we draw here. So I don't, we don't really need to scry right now. Anything we draw is going to be perfectly reasonable. Sure, that's perfectly reasonable. Nice. I played. I either went six and one or six and two. I don't remember. I I know I won the last six matches I played, and I don't remember if I lost lost one or lost two to start with, but I played just I just played Orzov. I just put put together an Orzov deck, a black white deck. With a bunch of stuff from two to six mana. I know I, I remember I lost my first match to Esper and I beat Esper in the last match. I had like two free wins of like opponents, um, you know, go like mulligan, mulligan, and then just quit. That was like two of my matches. Played a Sir, a Cynic Marfolk deck. Okay. Okay, cool. You played the crap out of the format even after you got the six wins. You just enjoyed the singleton and kept playing it. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, sorry, Matthews. Yeah, sorry you were bored without me yesterday. But I am back. Everything's good. Field of the Dead. We haven't been rocking too much here. Grave Waker. That's some pretty sweet art, not gonna lie. That is really cool. We just have these elementals that are rising up to take down these Grave Wakers, though. I think it's just a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, I finished the, the Singleton event. Yep, yeah, we are just talking about that. Yeah, I, I played Orzov. So, yep, good to go there. Like six three, very nice. Yeah, that's what basically the same I did. I either went six one or six two. I don't I don't remember. But yeah, got that done. Orzov was pretty good. I went six two. I lost to a mono red also. I lost to Esper and then lost a mono red for my first two matches. That's right. And then I won. Then I got the other six. game.
No, I don't. I don't really have anything to discuss about it, NASCAR father. I just. I saw there was the announcement. I kind of. I browsed through it, but I didn't. I don't know too much ab about it. That much. Um, but yeah, there was a new organized play announcement. Um, I don't know. Too much specifics. You can find it by going to magic.gg. I know that. Anyway, eight and a half tails. Welcome back with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. Well, I guess that says you're, it's your first time subbing. I thought you, thought that was a reset, but still, eight and a half tails. You you are awesome, and Heretic Man as well. Uh, we don't know exactly when Brawl's coming. Brawl's gonna be it's gonna be after the next set. We know that, but that's about it that we know about with Brawl right now. Andres Forerunners instead of Jace. Yeah, when, when you get to like a really late game and you already have creatures out and everything, then in, yeah, Andres Forerunners can kill them. I was satisfied with... with Jace. Wasn't too mad at Jace. Uh, yeah, I guess so. So is this Teamer Reclamation? That's what it's kind of looking like. All right, we we drew a Yurok. We played a Yurok. We got two Star of Extinctions down. Also, I train and meditate and prepare. So we'll see. If we get to do anything cool with Yurok here. Well, Yurok has Death Touch, so therefore, therefore Narset dies. That's probably how that works. It's, pro it's probably not that Narset had three loyalty and Yurok has three power. That's probably not it. It's probably that death touch. No, that's not correct. By the way, <laughs> if you're wondering, planeswalker, er, planeswalkers are not affected by Death's Touch. All right, so we got two more Yuroks in the graveyard. I guess our Tamiyo is just mostly going to be looking for Nexus now. I don't think there's anything else really to look for besides Nexus. My notes helpful. Well, that's convenient.
Is it Vraska's finisher that kills stuff that's damaged? Maybe. That sounds like a, a card. But yeah, I'm just gonna. I like streaming and everything. I'm just gonna continue to, to stream and grow the stream, grow the YouTube channel, and you know make a whole lot more content with all these new formats that are that are gonna be coming out, like historic brawl, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna be doing all that instead of trying to focus on getting into uh, the competitive play side, like the MPL and that kind of stuff. What are we doing? Oh yeah. All right, so cast down out. One more to ego in. I don't I don't even know what they're really all about. I don't even know what I'm gonna be egoing. We'll place your rock with the more aggressive dino. No, I don't. I don't do the drafts. Um, I just do constructed here on stream and everything. So we have to draw one land, but we have. 29 lands in the deck. So I didn't think it was too hard to draw a land to get to Rejuvenator and then start getting more lands and everything. With 29 in the deck. This is kind of what I'm talking about, though. We need... Our deck needs more green sources than what we got with these Cavalier Thorns. I think we got too many non non green lands. Hmm. That could definitely be a really important card later. Yeah, so this is just this was a donation deck that we had sent in. Um, that's very similar to that rotation proof deck that we played on Monday, but we got your rocks in here now, um, and it's not. There's a couple of cards that are rotating out in the main deck. We have just Re rejuvenator and and nexus of fate. There's one nexus for rejuvenator, and then you know mana base stuff that we have. Yep, yeah, I think Cavalier Thorns is probably the best Cavalier card. is very powerful. I have practiced against keep an open mind. River's Rebuke, huh? Uh, I must stay focused. You don't really need to worry about Ascanta flipping. Just one card over there. Darn.
More land drops is always good. Yeah, I like all the Cavaliers. I, I like all five of them. I think they're all very good. Tom Prius with that sub for the 10th month in a row. Thank you so much there, Tom. Definitely get some hype boats in the chat. All right, so we've seen that we saw them have counter magic previously. Do I want to go Rejuvenator Cavalier or do I want to try to have Nexus? So they're not they're not close to flipping this as Kanta still. Let's let's keep ramping. <laughs> We're gonna need more green mana to be able to replay all this stuff. After they rivers rebuke. Hey, Elijah. Yeah, when there's two Nexuses, the second one to resolve takes the extra turn. So there's Reclamation. Are we just not going to have any more turns? Hmm. Okay, so they are Reclamation Nexus. We haven't seen either of those cards yet. My play was not the best against Reclamation Nexus. But we'll see. They only got the two cards in hand still. I'm expecting just a River's Rebuke. There we go. I'll put all our ramp back. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then I have four mana left. Cast this. Oh, it resolved. I would like to test a new hypothesis with you. Oh, hey, Tarai, you're welcome. I follow the tracks of the wise. You're welcome. Glad I could help. And I yeah, I remember that. I remember, yeah, you buying the Value Town deck there at the event and, and everything. Yeah, happy to help. Ooh. Okay. Are they gonna take Nexus out of my deck? So they take that one Nexus out of my deck? Okay. We'll trade that for the expansion there. Expansion can could draw them so many cards, like the explosion. Like with, with Reclamation here, they could have drawn so many cards. It's 
Possible expansion explosions like their only win con. Nope, they have Chandra's. A lot of Chandra's. A primal amulet. An Ugin. A Krasis. Two Ugin. So two Ugin, one Krasis, two expansion explosion. Three Krasis. Three Krasis. Um, I don't even know what I like want to tick up for, honestly. Like what, like Risen Reef or something? Let's just cast this Multani. Y'all are awesome. Thank, thanks, Tura. And Kaotech. Kaotech? Yeah. That's probably right. Yep. Keep the hype butts in the chat for our re and new subscribers here. Alright, let's just play this Multani. It's like a, I don't know, a million million, basically. Aid your research. Discarding another land. So Multani's a 14 14. We can make that 15 by or 19 by the next turn. Uh, they drew a land. Alright, so that should be it. We, we should be able to make that's what I was thinking that Multani we could make Multani lethal. These cavaliers. I guess discarding. Oh, I guess discarding that forest wasn't a great idea. Hmm. No, these are green sources. Still that seventeen. All we have to do is hit hit a land here. Oh, I could have field of ruined, and that would have got us there. But yep, there's a land, so we're good. It really doesn't matter that I could have played the Field of the Dead first and made more zombies. They have this fiery cannonade. It really doesn't matter. And then, of course, we could we could tick up Tamiyo and if any of those four cards are land also. All right, we're two and one. Yeah, this is Dr. Grindle's deck. This one's pretty sweet here. A Field of the Dead. Your rock deck. Yeah, Multani was really impressive there. Because we're milling ourselves so fast with like these Cavalier Thorns and everything. And we're ramping so hard. We're getting so many lands in play and in our graveyard. Where you add those together for Multani. Plus we can just mill over Multani. And then put it back in our hand like that. Yeah, Multani was pretty awesome. That was a good one. Uh, thanks, eight and a half tails. Put put that together too. That's awesome. Temple of Skrylance. Like Assassin's Trophy is like okay to like draw late and stuff. It's just not a removal spell I want to use early. We're going to be spending... Okay, it is Esper. Um, we're going to be spending our early turns just doing these things. Cool. Down, 
down. Boo. Good call. Get that temple in here. So we're going to see if we can have this Field of the Dead outgrind our opponent. I got three cards and not very much mana. I want to take the other Field of the Dead. But then they don't trigger. If I take a Memorial, we get a 2-2, and then I have a Memorial that can draw a couple of cards. I'm thinking... Like, the Field of the Dead's probably... Yeah, it's just better to go in the late game. I wanted, like, the, the extra zombie here to pressure a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, if that's their play. I'm hoping they don't have Hero of Dominaria here. No, no. Boo. I am not going to sit this one out. Let's skip to the good part. All right, well, the, the hero Dominaria is tough to beat. I could have... To cut that cast down much earlier. No more games. All right, no Kaya's Wrath. That's a good sign for no Kaya's Wrath. If they had Legion's End, I would have been able to cast down my own zombie to keep all the zombies from dying to Legion's End. Yeah, you can, right now, Jada, you, you can, like, this month you'll qualify for a, a future Mythic Qualifier. But, yeah, the, the one that's this upcoming weekend is from, you had to qualify for that one uh, month in the previous few months. Okay. We will meet again. Not bad, not bad. Teferi's out of there. Of course, a, a Wrath is like our the thing that we need to be worried about. There's no reason to play this Swamp. And just let more creatures get Wrathed away. Boo. There's another one. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Yeah, I think I think I'm kind of there with you, Varchild. I haven't done too well playing Grixis Control recently. Not as well as I thought I'd be doing. It's only a matter at the very of time. least. Do I kill Hero? No. You click on the number? 
here you send the whole stack. Good thing I saved this assassin's trophy. All right, let's draw Cavalier of Thorns, or Yurok. Do I click on the number? Whoa, that's cool. Assassin's Trophy though is only permanent in opponent control, so if this is so if they find Legion's end, I don't get to save my zombies. That's not a good draw for me. Narset. Get get that impulse in there. Sorry I'm late. You know what? I'm not done yet. This is hardly my worst. All defeat. right, gotta get all these teferis out of here. So we've gotten through three teferi here of Dominaria so far. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, any reason to do that before combat? No, can't really think of one. All right, Temple of Scrystery. All right, that, that joke doesn't work with mystery, I guess. All right, so what do they got now? They drew a random card off to Fairy, plus their card for turn. Othakaya number three. So we've gone through three Hero of Dominarias, three Othakayas. Temple of Mr. Mr. Scry. Down, down, down. Scrystery. Temple of Scrystery. <laughs> yeah, sell the wreckage would be pretty bad against us. That is true. Attack! Attack! They gotta do some blocking. See what kind of blocking they want to do. Yep. Yeah, looking for little Teferi to bounce the oath to, to try to kill us and have enough attackers and everything trying to kill us. 
Just going straight up chumps. Not chumping the 5 6, though. So, why would you chump two power creatures and not the five power creature if your goal is just to chump everything? Why would. Why would that be what you want to chump? You just save three life. It's just, it's just three life you could gain. I am not going to sit this one out. Just choosing not to have Don't three worry. more life. I got this. Plan on playing Death Shadow over there or something? So Esper Hero. Let's get these grasps in here. Alright, Trophy, you did a pretty good job. Can't complain. Can't complain too much. A Boreal Grazer just always looks like the worst card in our deck. It's it's worse after it's a card that's worse after sideboarding though also like the the games go longer more interaction after sideboarding and this O3 isn't very good there. Yeah, I just want to cut that card. All right, that card's gone. We'll get some Ceratops in here. Is that enough like hero removal? Should I play some more cast downs for hero? I mean, I'm basically bringing in the Noxious Grass to replace Cast Down. I could play... I don't even know if they'll keep Hero. They probably will keep Hero, though. Let's try this. And if we lose Game 3, we can adjust. Again, your rock may not be... May not be the best, but honestly, it could be just fine, though, too. I don't think I want an ego. Ego, it would be for Big Teferi. I don't think we really need to go that route though. <laughs> Gotta have ego for their egos. There you go. Ego for your ego. So I can lead with the field of the dead. Ugh. Get it underneath their ego and it makes sure that I get to play Risen Reef on turn three. Or if I lead with Overgrown Tomb, then we get to Thought Erasure on turn three and Risen Reef on turn, or sorry, we get a Thought Erasure on two and Risen Reef on three, but if they have ego, they may take field of the dead. I think it's pretty unlikely to have ego. But then I'm like kind of priced into taking ego, I suppose. Do you get to take all eight? If you play on more ego and you just say Teferi, do you get to take all eight Teferis? That's how it should be. This card says Teferi on it. That's his name. It's gone. Sorry, them's, them's the rules. All, all the cards that are, say Teferi, they gone.
<laughs> That's exactly how you scam your nephews whenever we play. <laughs> Of course, on Mordigo also says that you can only choose four copies of the card. I guess you could take like four copies of um, four copies of Teferi's. Not sure if I want to use Noxious Grasp on this thing or not. I guess so. All right, Cavalier Thorns, can you beat one card over there? I mean, two Cavalier Thorns in play isn't spectacular. Set up, like, you know, like if they both die. Kind of thing. It's fine, it's not spectacular though. Yeah, we could have just a land destruction deck. That just plays all the land destruction spells, including, you know, maybe like Star of Extinction and stuff. All the land destruction stuff, and then also play just four unmoored egos, and you just name their lands. You know, you're just like, all right, planes. Let's take four of those. Or you're like with these things, you're just like water. Okay, they haven't played Watery Grave. Name Watery Grave. Take those. And that's lethal. You just cut down on the lands they have in their deck. This Field of the Dead card is really not bad. Not bad. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that or not. It's not a bad one. <laughs> and where do you go naming lands is the jankiest jank I love it that would be pretty janky hey Zerv you're welcome just thanks to the A plus content you're welcome Zerv aww y'all are so nice yeah, we could do thousand thousand year storm, thousand year storm on Mordigo. The goal is just to try to like take their whole deck. If that's how you mill them out, you name like all the lands and all the spells and everything. Hey, Phil Collins. Phil Collins's winner, winner, son. Welcome, welcome. Whoa, Zerf's getting in on the gifted train hype. It's gifted boat hype? Yeah. Need more boats. Thanks, Zerf. All right, we are going to take... Oh, this one goes in tapped. Dang it, I was thinking Grow Spiral. I was gonna. Grow Spiral comes in untapped. Grazer doesn't. Darn it. Alright, so with five more subscribers, we're up to 23 on the day.
All right, they're teamer stuff, I suppose. Get out of here, Grazer. Well, it's going to be kind of difficult to beat those cards when we got nothing over here. We'll see how it goes, though. Okay, not good. That's how it goes. Not good. This is looking really bad for us. I guess I need to kill the flyer, I guess. I guess I need to kill this flyer. What? What's American Football LP1? What's LP1? Oh, it's a band. So describe both those to the top. We will now blow those up. Make them shuffle those. My opponent is out cavaliering and out elementaling us. Yeah, but that's how that's how Wizards makes its money. Doesn't let you just buy wild cards. Doesn't let you just buy like specific mythics and stuff. Jeez. We can't. Can we win this? Doesn't feel like we can win this, but we'll see what happens. These grazers are always so bad. It's just a dead card. Even with 29 lands. Hmm. 
Am I supposed to unmoored ego? They're different elementals. We can't really stop entrancing melody at all. I guess we have thought erasure. So they like take like Omnath and Cavalier Thorns and stuff like that from their deck with Unmoored Eco. Yeah, Noxious Grasp is certainly coming in. The whole give them more mana thing is a really bad idea. As we saw there, like they're playing Omnath and stuff, like giving them extra lands, it's a really bad idea. Take out this card. I guess we do this instead of these things. I guess this is what we're going to try here. Yeah, I'm going to try to ego the like Omnath, Cavalier of Thorns, stuff like that. I don't... I don't know, those, those cards are so good. And they generate so much value that even though Ego is card disadvantage, it's still better than the advantage that those cards g give you. So we can take Risen Reef and Omnath. Risen Reef, Omnath, Cavalier Thorns. <laughs> we'll see what happens. This could be the best idea ever, or it could be the worst idea ever. Fela Summer is broken. Fela Summer is so broken. They only have two in their whole deck. Like, so if, if these Unmoored Egos were all Assassin's Trophies, are we feeling good about this game? If they're all Assassin's Trophies? Oh, are you kidding me? I didn't. I didn't look at the. I didn't look at the auto tap. I was just you know, thinking about what's a name. I didn't look at the auto tap. Yeah, if they're all trophies, we would have what mold to five again. We already mold to. That was already a mold to six, so we would have just gone to five. If they're all trophies. I mean, Assassin's Trophy definitely does not beat my opponent's deck.
Yeah, Veil of Summer was really rough, that game. But yeah, that, that really hurt us, that auto-tap. I mean, honestly, I was probably going to be taking Nissa instead of Cavalier Gales anyway. But we would have at least gotten that Nissa out of here. Power these lands. Do you have Vigilance? No. Why can't you have Vigilance? <laughs> the land fights for us. Their deck has certainly outgrinded us. We are just taking lethal here. You know, we have eight cavaliers at the five mana spot also, or eight of the five drops at the four cavalier thorns for your rock. Besides just looking at it there that very last turn, we and we have our four Risen Reefs also. So, like, we have, like, really similar type stuff, but did not see it compared to what they had, though. Instead, we were, we were just sitting with our one-for-one -one removal, both of those games. So those are the hands that we had that just get destroyed. All right, so a couple of things with the deck. I would like another green source in here. Or two. Probably two. Uh, probably... Yeah, like, like we have, we have Simic Gilgate. Oh, no, there is the blue. Okay, never mind. There's, there's the blue, green, gain life land. I was like, how do we have the Gilgate and not the gain life land? Okay, so we do have that land. And we have that one here. Cavalier of Thorns was kind of tough. Yeah, Veil of Summer is messed up. Uh, we got to get Veil of Summers in here too, right? Like that's an awesome card. But how how does this deck even beat that opponent's deck with four Blood Sun and Veil of Summers and all that kind of stuff and all that card advantage? Like, what do we? We would have to have, like, we'd have to have our Risen Reef and Cavalier and Yurok draws to keep up. This Arboreal Grazer card looked really bad. We didn't play against any, like, real aggro that it could be good against. I guess we played against Mono Blue. We didn't have it at that matchup, but that would have been a really good matchup for Grazer as Mono Blue. That would have been a perfect matchup for Grazer, but we didn't have it then. As far as lands, I'm not sure about, like, the second Watery Grave, the Memorial to Genius, um, Arch of Arazka, Blast Zone. I guess you'd keep Blast Zone, but Arch of Araska seems pretty slow. Those could be lands to take out for more green sources. You know, we could play the green guild gate over here. Like the green black guild gate. Maybe a second forest. We just don't have very many cards. Like we only have fifteen sources of green for Cavalier Thorns. I want a couple more of those. Um, what does this deck want to do against that elemental deck? I'm not sure. I. The Unmored Ego plan, you know, looked pretty embarrassing there, but I don't think the Assassin's Trophy plan is very good either. 
against that kind of deck. Just give them more mana to use all their with all their card advantage and crises and everything like that. Hydroid Crisis was a card that that was the card. That's the card that really felt like we were missing. As you saw, like a lot of those times, like we had just a lot of mana and we didn't have enough cards. We didn't have enough cards to spend our mana on. Hydroid Crisis was the card that that's that's the card. I knew like there was something that like it felt like we just didn't have that we were supposed to have. And that's it, Hydroid Crisis. Unfortunately, Yurok never did anything for us. We have four of them in here. We hardly drew it. But I, I think that this deck could, could certainly have like just one or two Yuroks. I really don't think it needs four. Just fine. Um, and that, that could be a spot where we get some Crisis in here. And everything. And, and yeah, I don't I don't like these trophies. I don't really like this Grazer either. I don't I don't know if Growth Spiral is better than Grazer. I don't know. Like Grazer is better against Um You know, the aggro decks, of course. But having Krasis also helps out Grazer, because you can also just have like Krasis later on that draws a lot of cards, then you have extra lands, and then you have extra lands in your hand again for Grazer. But we didn't have the card advantage to get the extra lands in hand. So, like, if Grazer wasn't, if we didn't have Grazer on like turn one, any other Grazer was not actually getting us extra land drops. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't like the Assassin's trophies at all. I think you got Cast Downs, Legions, and Noxious Grass. So I think that's good enough card advantage. So, like playing like Krasis instead, I think that can be that can be better. Certainly. There are the trophies. Like we had the one game against Esper where trophy was was just fine, killing like some some Teferis, but like in that game we were just sitting there forever not like playing cards. Like if we had if we had Krasis in those games, we would have been drawing a lot more cards and everything. <clears throat> hey what's up, Spanky? Thanks for that sub there. Yeah, Thought Erasure wasn't wasn't so powerful for us. Because the thing about this deck is this deck, especially game one, we're trying to do, like, we're trying to do our own linear thing of, like, ramping really hard and, like, milling over a whole bunch of cards, getting a lot of zombies, um, you know, we get to the point, like, where we have, like, the Nexus deck extra turns. Like, we're trying to do that, all that kind of stuff. And Thought Erasure doesn't, doesn't help with that. And plus, and then also Thought Erasure just messes with our mana because then we have to play a lot more blue and black. To help support Thought Erasure. Whoops, I accidentally took, took one out. To help support Thought Erasure. It messes up our mana to get to like cap to have Cavalier turned on. Thought Erasure can be good in some in some matchups. That's why I had it in. So th this was the rotation proof one that we played two days ago. Uh, oh, I guess I don't have it on here anymore. I had, to, I had to delete some decks to add on new ones. But but yeah, that, that could be like Grow Spiral and stuff and just and help us just hit more more lands, get more cards with Krasis. Yeah, this we got to have four Hydro Krasis in this deck. That's, that's a requirement, though. Got to have four Hydro Krasis. All right, anyway, that's Sultai, your rock lands there. Um, pretty close, but there's, you know, a few things to, to change about it. That's all right. That's all good. But still went 3-2. Nothing wrong with that either. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But thanks for watching Soul Tie Your Rock Lands, and I'll see you for the next video.